वेलकम स्टूडेंट्स अगेन इन टू द केमिस्ट्री क्लास टुडे वी आर लर्निंग द चैप्टर नंबर सिक्सटीन द लास्ट चैप्टर ऑफ ट्वेल्थ साइंस ग्रीन केमिस्ट्री एंड नैनो टेक्नोलॉजी नाउ यू ऑलवेज हर्ड अबाउट द वर्ड ग्रीन केमिस्ट्री एंड नैनो केमिस्ट्री ऑल्सो now let us first learn about this green chemistry nano technology or nano chemistry we will learn after this now what is this green chemistry now do chemistry plays an important role to improve the quality of our life definitely chemistry play an important role to improve the quality of our life but unfortunately due to the achievement of our health and global environment due to the achievement our health and global environment are under threat due to the achievement in the chemistry so many achievement we achieve in chemistry uh, that is the industrialization poly polymers different polymers which are used in the everyday life different uh, that is the fabrics cosmetics soaps this detergent so many but due to that what happened unfortunately fortunately there is the threat about that in the people because there is the that is health issue and global environment problems due to the hazards of the waste products also due to increase in human population the demand for the different products increases and the industrial revolution that is revolution in industry energy crisis shortage of energy and environmental pollution such are highlighted are the major global problems in the 21th century that is why to minimize the problem of energy crisis and pollution we have to adopt the green chemistry then what is this green chemistry now green chemistry means uh, that is the minimum use of hazard substances or not the generation of the hazards chemicals that is the green chemist now uh, here let us see the definition of green chemist green chemistry is the use of chemistry for pollution prevention that is not formation of pollution pollution prevention by environmentally conscious design how we prevent the environmental pollution that we have to design consciously now we have to design design consciously of chemical products and processes such that they reduce or eliminate the use and generation of the hazard substances so green chemistry is the use of chemistry for pollution prevention by environmental design by environmentally conscious design of chemical products and processes that reduce or minimize or eliminate the use of hazards of the substances so to minimize the use of hazard substances to reduce the use of hazard substances design the processes and the chemical in such a way that they are environmentally environmentally very very that is the useful and there is the prevention of pollution and that is the green chemistry remember that so due to the hazard substances there is the pollution hazards and to minimize the use or to minimize the generation of these hazard substances is really the green chemistry that is uh, we can design environmentally 
and by consciously we can design such processes and that is the chemicals now uh, again green chemistry is an approach to chemistry that aims to maximize the efficiency and minimize the hazards effects on human health and environment what is again green chemistry green, green chemistry is an approach we we have to approach for green chemistry to that aims to maximize efficiency we have to uh, maximize the efficiency of the products and we have to minimize the hazards effects of the different chemicals on human health and environment and the concept of green chemistry was coined by the paul t anastas paul anastas the scientist uh, this uh, they uh, coined the uh, their work that is the green chemistry and there are the 12 principles uh, which have to adapt for the green chemistry to minimize the environmental pollution and the hazards of the chemicals now uh, there are we have to reduce to reduce the impact of energy crisis energy crisis is also there because uh, due to the population increase there is the energy crisis so to reduce the impact of energy crisis and pollution and to save the natural resources natural resources on that earth we need to implement 12 principles we have to implement 12 principles of green chemistry and initiated or put forth by paul anastas wherever possible uh, wherever these principle possible possible we have to adopt them and then and then the future of our that is the new generations will be safety remember that and to uh, that is these resources natural resources we have to conserve that natural natural resources for the next generation for the green earth for the green development and due to the pollution hazards and the use of the hazardous substances we have a very uh, dangerous crisis of energy and pollution and so we have to adopt these 12 principle given by paul anastas now first let us see about the sustainable development sustainable development that is very important and what is this sustainable development how we have to develop sustainably for the new generations for the next generation now sustainable development is the development that meets the need of the present the development definitely meets for the need of the pre present generation but without compromising the ability of future generation we must meet the present generation uh, by developing sustainable development is the development which meet the needs of the present generation but without compromising the ability of the future generation to meet their own need that means their needs must be uh, they, they fulfill their needs in future that means what we have to do if we cut the plants if we cut one plant you may plant ten plants for that that is the sustainable development for the future now sustainable development has been continued to evolve this must be continuously evolved sustainable development if this generation do the uh, development by sustainable development then the next generation must do the sustainable development again this must be evolved as the that protecting the world's resources due to the sustainable development the world resources the natural resources are protecting or will be protect green chemistry plays an important role in sustainable development if we adopt the 12 principles of the green chemistry then definitely the green chemistry plays an important role in the sustainable developments we can achieve these sustainable development by adopting the 
12 principles of the green chemistry given by the Paul and his test. Now, what, which are that uh, 12 principles and how we have to, uh, that is, use that principles in everyday life, that is very important. Let us see all the 12 principles one by one. Now, see again on the blackboard. Here, we are learning now the, that is the principle of the green chemistry. Now, let us learn the first principle. We are learning principles of green chemistry. There are the 12 principles given by the Paul Anastra. Now, the first principle is the prevention of waste and byproducts. That means we have to not prepare the waste products or the byproducts which are not required in the maximum amount. Then how we can prevent that? Now to give priority for the prevention of the waste rather than cleaning up and treating waste after it has been created. Now how we can prevent? We have to prevent the manufacture or synthesis the waste product rather than cleaning it. If we not uh, synthesize the waste material, we do, do not have to clean it. Or we can treat the waste products chemically in such a way that it has been then created in a new products. So, by treating the waste after it has been created, if the waste is created, we have to treat them and we have to convert them in the useful things or into the uh, humus we can convert. That means biodegradable waste must be there and then can we prevent the waste material and the byproducts. Now, for example, here the illustration is given to develop the zero waste. If we have to develop the zero waste technology, that is the zero waste technology. Zero waste technology, JWT. So, to develop the zero waste technology, JWT, in terms of zero waste technology in a chemical synthesis, waste products should be zero or minimized. So, what this zero waste technology tells us that the waste product must be zero. Their synthesis must be zero or minimal, minimum. It also aims to use the waste product of one system as the raw material for the other system. Now, how we can achieve the zero waste technology or zero waste products? If the waste products is of the one process waste product, we can use as a raw material for the another process. Then there is the zero waste technology is achieved. So, if the waste is of the one system, it should be used as the raw material for the other system. For example, bottom ash of the thermal power stations. And in thermal power station, there is the use of the charcoal in a large quantity. So, after using that charcoal for the power generation, after power generation, that charcoal ash or that is the bottom ash of the thermal power station can be used as the raw material for the cement and bricks industry. We can use that, that is the ash of the power station uh, as that of the uh, material for the cement and the bricks, preparation of the bricks. So, bottom ash of the thermal power station can be used as the raw material for the cement and bricks uh, industry. Now, another is uh, effluent or fluent coming out from cleaning of the machinery parts, that is the water, which is cleaning uh, water. Uh, which, which is used for the cleaning of the machinery parts, which is the eluant, can be used or may be used as the coolant water in thermal power station. That water, we, we have not 
or that uh, we can we, na, we have not to give waste or uh, throw that water which is used in the uh, cleaning of the machines but that can be used for the coolant for the thermal power uh, stations now uh, next is the uh, another second uh, that is the principle of the green chemistry is the atom economy in this way we already learned that the, how the we can prevent the waste formation or by product formation by zero waste technology or how we can use that that is the used uh, uh, material or the waste product of the one system into the another system as the raw product that we all learned in this first that is the uh, principle of green chemistry now this is very very important principle now second one is the atom economy now what is this atom economy atom economy is a measure of the amount of atom from the starting material that are present in the useful products at the end of chemical process that means uh, when we uh, prepare or synthesize the useful products in any chemical uh, synthesis or chemical reaction then uh, atom economy is a measure of that amount of atoms from starting material that are present in the useful products at the end of the uh, chemical reaction that means starting material uh, how many atoms are there in the starting material and how many atoms um, will be useful in that of the product which is generated and that is given in the atom economy now a good atom economy means most of the atoms of the reactants are incorporated in the desired products what is the good uh, atom economy which substances we are using as as the reactants to produce the products that substances that is that reactants must have the atoms and that maximum atoms of that reactants must uh, taken into the products that is the atom economy what is that good atom economy means most of the atoms of the reactants are incorporated in the desired products most most of the atoms of the reactants must be incorporated into the desired products that is the good atom uh, economy now uh, there are only small amounts of unwanted by products are formed and hence lesser problems of waste disposal so if we use maximum of the atoms from the reactants into the desired products there is formation of very less amount of waste products or waste material and there is no problem of the waste material disposal now how the uh, atom economy can we achieve now let us learn here now take the illustration the concept of atom economy gives the measures of the unwanted product produced in a particular reaction that means it uh, this uh, atomic economy tells us how to measure the unwanted product produced in the particular reaction now this is the formula to calculate the percentage of atom economy so percentage of atom economy is equal to formula weight of the desired product desired product means of the product useful product uh, and uh, formula weight of the desired product means how many atoms are there their weight the sum of their weight is the formula weight of the desired product divided by uh, sum of the formula weight of all the reactant used in the reaction how many reactants we are used uh, of that all formula weight is divided uh, to this formula weight of desired product and multiply it by 100 and then we then we uh, got the percent atom uh, economy now for example see here conversion of butane one all to bromobutane now if, if we have to do this reaction that is the we have to convert the butane one all or butane all into the one bromobutane or butyl bromide then uh, how it is possible to calculate the percent atom economy now this is the butane one all now see here number one carbon two three four now on the first carbon there is oxygen so it is the butane uh, sorry uh, on the first carbon there is hydroxyl group or uh, that is alcoholic group so it is the uh, butane one all 
that is the butane and uh, after reacting this with NaBr and H2SO4 we know this reaction of bromination of the uh, or to obtain the bromo um, derivative or it is also called as the halogen derivative and that is the alkyl bromide we have to obtain we have to use the NaBr and the H2SO4 acid. So these are the reactants uh, butane 1 all NaBr and sulfuric acid and after reaction it gives us the uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. So it is the 1 bromo butane. It is the 1 bromo butane we obtain here uh, after replacing this OH by this Br. Now what is remaining is the NaHSO4. Na this eliminated o, uh, hydrogen and SO4 and H2O. H2 water is formed. Now that are the product. But we have to take only the formula weight of the useful product. Remember that. Or desired product. And divide the formula weight of desired product by the uh, formula weight uh, or sum of the formula weight of all the reactants. So percent economy is equal to uh, mass of. Now see here in the what is the desired product or useful product that is the 1 bromo butane. There are the 4 carbon atoms. So where mass of 4 carbon atoms again uh, plus there are how many hydrogen 3 plus 2 5 7 9 9 hydrogen atoms and 1 bromine so mass of the 4 carbon plus 9 hydrogen plus 1 bromine atoms divided by mass of now see in the reactor there are again the 4 carbon atoms now these 9 10 11 12 there are the 12 hydrogen atoms and 5 oxygen, this 4 and this 1, 5 oxygen atom, 1 bromine and 1 sodium atom and again there is the 1 sulfur atom. So, uh, add the formula weight of all the reactants atom and multiply it by 100. So, if we calculate this, that is the 14 sorry 12 is the mass of the carbon 12 uh, multiply by 4 plus 9 multiply by 1 plus this bromine 34 then we obtain this 137 micron divided by 275 micron uh, into 100 and that comes up to the 49.81 percent so percent economy is 41 sorry 49 0.81 percent. Now this is the percent economy for the reaction of conversion of butane 1 all to 1 bromobutane. Then we have to try to obtain maximum uh, product of the uh, 1 bromobutane by using such that is the percentage of atom eco uh, economy. Now let us learn the third that is the third principle less hazardous chemical Synthesis. Now the third one, third principle, less hazardous chemical synthesis. That means we have to synthesize very, very minimum amount of these hazardous chemicals. Then and then we achieve the green chemistry principle. Now this is the third principle that is a designed chemical reaction. You have to design the chemical reaction in such a way that or synthesis roots or mechanism you have or we have to design chemical reactions and synthesis roots or mechanisms should be as safe as possible. That means there is no synthesis of hazard waste. So that we can avoid the formation of hazards waste from the chemical processes. So design the chemical processes in such a way that or design the root or mechanism of the chemical processes in such a way that we can avoid the formation of the waste product or hazardous product. For example, uh, earlier DDT dichloro diphenyl trichloroethane DDT powder that is the insecticide yeah, the short name is DDT now that is the long 
name of that is the dichloro diphenyl trichloroethane now that dtt in the earlier days was used as the insecticide and which can which was effective in controlling the disease like the malaria and typhoid carrying mosquito so the mosquito which uh, which uh, spread these diseases that is the uh, malaria and typhoid that mosquito can be uh, controlled by using the insecticide earlier which was prepared that is the ddt dichloro diphenyl trichloroethane but what is there it was realized that this ddt is harmful for the living things or living world because if the insects are eaten by the fishes then that ddt powder accumulate in the stomach of the fish and if the such fish are eaten by the human beings then that directly comes into our body or human beings body the ddt is the very hazardous chemical uh, then that will be realized and uh, nowadays therefore the synthesis of ddt is banned and nowadays such insecticides are prepared that is the benzene hexachloride bhc powder benzene hexachloride is used as the insecticide and one of the gamma isomer of this bhc is called gamaxin or indine so now this is the uh, green chemistry that is we have to synthesize such uh, that is uh, chemicals which are not hazardous for the living beings and if such chemicals are already uh, prepared or synthesized uh, that was uh, uh, that was hazardous to the living uh, thing living uh, organisms or living world then that should be banned or that not we have to prevent the synthesis of that hazardous chemicals now these are the three different uh, that is a principle we learn today Uh, for the principles of the green chemistry if we follow this principle there there is the no problem of pollution and no problem for that of the uh, human beings environment and therefore uh, we have to achieve the green chemistry green world green that is the earth our earth for the new generation next generation if student uh, now we will see uh, in the next lecture the fourth that is the principle and up to the 12th principle we learn about that about the green principles of green chemistry but if you understand these three main principles that is uh, prevention of waste or by by products by achieving the zero waste technology uh, atom economy how we can achieve the percentage of atom economy and how there is the less hazardous chemicals are synthesized by us if you understand all these three principle then you like share and subscribe this video and tell the other student to subscribe now we will meet into the next lecture uh, in that we have to learn the fourth principle of the green chemistry thank you